heartwarming to see so many employees I haven't seen in, in a long, long time. I haven't had a chance to talk to you yet. You've been here. I look forward to uh, visiting people with afterwards. Um, you know, we were founded on Thanksgiving Day, um, which I think is especially um, something to treasure. And so it's been 110 years. And we were founded, um, and we're the story of one, and the story of thousands. One woman, Ellen Burge, um, had one dream to care for others, one vision to create a hospital. She had one house. And she gave her house up to be a hospital. It's her only house. And um, uh, she made that happen on Thanksgiving Day. And we have been open now for 40,000 plus consecutive days. We've never shut down since she opened those doors. Um, in those first three years, we delivered about 25 babies. There was a day in June this year where we delivered 25 babies in a single day. As a matter of fact, we delivered 36 babies in 36 hours. And we've really come a long way. We were founded on philanthropy and on volunteerism. And while some gave treasure, and some gave talent, some gave time. And there are countless people before me and before everyone in this room who made this place what it is. And I want to share just a couple of those real brief stories. Um, one is a woman that um, didn't have a lot of treasure to share. She was uh, had a, a young family living in the public Missouri. Uh, just a few years after our hospital opened, she decided it was her business to go to the hospital every day and bring food to patients. Because if you were in the hospital back then, hospitals didn't feed you. They, they counted on your family to feed you. Um, and if you didn't have a family, um, they counted on Amanda, was her name, to feed them. And Amanda went virtually every day. She'd bring canned goods, vegetables, and fruits in the wintertime. She'd work with linen. And she'd take her little boy with her, too, um, back and forth from the public to what is now Cox North. And that's, that's our history, people giving like that. And we did very well. We grew to 50 beds. Um, then the Depression came. And like so many uh, organizations, we struggled. And um, while we made it through the Depression, World War II came and resources were sent abroad, and the hospital struggled further. And by 1948, we were um, uh, virtually um, at the precipice of closing. And um, a group of our physicians, names many of you would recognize, like Dr. Farrell, uh, Dr. Wakeman, um, and others, they met and said, what can we do? What's our last ditch effort? How can we keep this place afloat? And one of them had a patient named Lester E. Cox. And he was, he was a prominent businessman in town, but not much history of philanthropy at that point. And so um, I believe it was Dr. Webb's patient. And Dr. Webb met with them and said, you know, could you help us out? Mm -hmm. And they were shocked that he said, yes. Yes, under two conditions. First, that I, I'll be on the board and I'll chair the board. And two, that you'll make a pledge, each physician, that you'll commit yourself to this organization and commit your money. And I'll match every dollar you put in. Lester E. Cox became uh, the chairman of the board. And if you think of why he may have chosen to have that need for philanthropy filled in his life, um, I think you may hearken back to the time when he was a little boy and his mother, Amanda Belcox, would travel from Republican Missouri back and forth to support this hospital when he was just a kid. She planted those seeds of volunteerism in him, and I believe that um, is why we're here today. Um, he was chairman of our board for 20 years. Um, we grew from 50 beds to 500 beds. Our asset base grew over tenfold. And um, uh, he served until he passed away in 1968.